Hello and welcome to the next instalment of Light at Speed. The last episode we looked at CRI, or Colour Rendering Index. At the end of that video, we discussed how CRI is wonderful, but might not be the best way of determining how well a light source renders colours in the modern age. It was originally founded in the 1960s. So today I wanted to explain TM30. The founders of TM30 were the IES Colour Metrics Task Group, and IES stands for Illumination Engineering Society. They were also behind the photometric file of the same name. The task group identified a few key limitations of the CRI method and wanted to tackle them with their method. These were that extended CRI still only uses 15 colour samples, which with modern computational capabilities could be vastly expanded. And in fact, TM30 uses 99. The task force also determined that CRI only tells you how well a source renders colours compared to the reference. That's what TM30 calls fidelity, not how saturated the colours would be, or if certain colours were more saturated than others. This is what TM30 calls gamut, and they wanted a visual diagram showing the light sources and how it performs through the spectrum. So TM30 was based on modern colour space CCAMO2 from the start. CRI used a quite dated chromacity diagram. CAM UCS is a much more capable system, giving much more information. The IES's TM30 uses 99 samples, which give more colour space, much more uniform coverage. Using 99 samples instead of 8 or 15 gives many more colour data points and more accuracy. The colours chosen also give an unbiased colour test using real-world colours. TM30 uses a tungsten halogen as a reference source and compares the spectral response of 99 colour samples. Each sample gets a score from 0 to 100, and these are all averaged to give the test source a fidelity score, much like CRI. TM30 calls that fidelity score RF, and it's 0 to 100. Interestingly, if you compare many RF scores to their CRI scores, you find that they're very similar, but in some cases they can differ. This might be because it's not unheard of for LED manufacturers to build LEDs to complete the CRI test really well, but they might miss colours that TM30 tests for. Even so, you might have a luminaire with great RF scores, but there might be certain areas of that spectrum where they're more dominant than others, making objects look more red or green, for example. This is where the TM30's gamut score comes in. The colour gamut index RG represents the average shift in saturation of a source when compared to halogen. The halogen source always gets a score of 100 for all the colours, but if a test source undersaturates some colours, its score will be below 100 for those colours. It might also oversaturate colours and therefore it will be above 100 in those. The RG score is an average and so gives a good indication of saturation, but is not specific to which colours might be affected. The last piece of the puzzle, then, is the colour vector graphic. This diagram shows a black ring of reference illumination, which is how a tungsten source saturates colour. Over the top of that ring, we see the test source, which is not always perfectly circular. When the test source ring dips inside the reference, there is an area of undersaturation. Where it extends, there's an area of increased saturation. In this diagram, we can see an LED source which slightly oversaturates in greens and violets and under in oranges and teals. Another view of this can be the colour distortion graphic, which uses a black background and the CCAM colour space shaped to show where the saturation capabilities are. I like this one as a quick reference. Remember that having a score of 100 only means that the test source does a perfect job of saturating colours like a halogen. For many this is wonderful, but there are some areas where I see that saturation of particular colours might be preferable. A fresh meat counter stands out as one example, where a saturating red might be a preference. So in summary, TM30 can give you three measures of the colour rendering really quickly when referenced against the halogen. An RF score, which is a similar measure to CRI, but has more detail and uses 99 colour samples instead of 8 or 15. An RG gamut score, which indicates average colour saturation. And lastly, a colour vector graphic, which shows the under or over saturation levels of colours quickly. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was beneficial. Precision Lighting and RCL both have CRI and TM30 data available for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or send me an email. And be sure to like, share and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.